Okay, this is going to be about uh, Donald Trump and will he even be picked as the uh, Republican uh, nominee in 2024, November 5th, okay, of 2024. Um, and, and a little bit about the five people at least who will definitely be running against him. And then also uh, Jack Smith, this uh, special counsel, counselor, is it counselor or counsel? Special counsel that Attorney General Merrick Garland has put in place to get this thing done. And man, he's tough. So that's what we'll be talking about. Hi, I'm Mark. This is my journey through tarot. Come on. Okay, all the cameras are on. I'm trying to get a bunch of new angles uh, today. But this one, let's see, I've got a script here that I want to tell you about what we're going to do. So first, what's going to happen is uh, we're going to do Donald Trump's announcement that he's running for president in 2024. And will that inspire voters other than his steadfast uh, supporters to um, help him win the election? Then, will he even win the Republican nomination? Uh, and who will the Republicans pick as a presidential, presidential nominee at the 2024 uh, Republican National Convention on uh, November 5th of 2024? Okay, so, so far the competition is number one, uh, former uh, Vice President Mike Pence. Number two, uh, newly uh, re-elected Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. Number three, former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie. Um, number four... Wow, former U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, or number five, a U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, Nikki Haley. All of those are compelling Republican candidates. But then uh, second, it's going to be Jack Smith, the special counsel from Attorney General Merrick, Merrick Garland for criminal investigations of former presidential president Donald Trump for the Mar-a-Lago scheme and for the January 6, 2021 insurrection. He's a longtime prosecutor who has overseen high-profile cases over decades, and he prosecuted a sitting U.S. senator, brought cases against um, gang members who were convicted of murdering New York City police officers, and prosecuted war crimes at The Hague. So he knows high-profile cases, and he will not be influenced by anybody, and that was uh, said by a former member of Robert Mueller's Team. And then Jack Smith pledged that the pace of the investigations will not pause or flag. He'll move forward expeditiously to throughever thoroughly to whatever outcome the facts and the law dictate. Wow. So that's a lot. Um, let's see how this goes. But uh, first, let's take a moment for uh, meditation. All right, so will he, first of all, even win the Republican nomination, okay, on November 5th of 2024? So let's see about that. Three cards for that. One, two, three. Okay, will he even win the nomination, okay? First card, ah, the world. End of a cycle. Um, interesting. Let's see what else we get here. Will he win the nomination? And this is indicating an end of a cycle. Perhaps not. Uh, next is the Ace of Pentacles. This, uh, just, okay, I like this right here. Because this has a tremendous amount of value for him. This is all the beans. Okay. And the last card is death. And it doesn't matter because it's the end. It's, the, it's, 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 it's done, okay? What he had going on for him that was interesting and that he thought would, um, you know, continue to uh, save him is finished, okay? And uh, what he's moving on to now is the whole enchilada, okay? This is all the value in that Ace of Pentacles. And sadly, no, it's the end. It's done. It's over. Nothing else is going to go on here for him. Wow, so he won't get the nomination. Well, that kind of uh, negates uh, a bunch of the next part of this whole reading. But uh, let's see. Let's go through the candidates. Okay, so we have four, uh, we'll go through them one at a time. 
former Vice President Mike Pence. Former Vice President Mike Pence. Okay, he's been throwing uh, Donnie almost under the bus, okay? He's been standing next to the curb with Donald next to him, uh, and the bus is coming, and kind of saying, it'd be a shame if you fell in front of that bus, wouldn't it? But not even that, uh, you, you get the feeling that he might even save him if, the, if he accidentally slipped. So that's uh, former President Mike Pence, and let's see, three cards. Can he win the nomination? One, two, and I have to say, can he win? Because, listen, lots of stuff can happen between now and then, and so we have to just deal with the current uh, energy, but uh, can Mike Pence win? Okay, uh, <laughs> this is the Five of Wands, and the Five of Wands is always confusion and arguing, kind of argy-bargy, my um, Australian friends would say, and uh, so, you know, Wands are actions, plans, uh, forward movement, and um, can he win? Eh. And uh, the next one up is the Three of Swords. The Three of Swords is kind of, um, not long-term, is a broken heart. And then the final card here uh, is going to be the, okay, so this is the Seven of Pentacles, which is um, really needing to, to, to practice what you're doing. No. Amazing. Um, interesting. So it looks like no, it, he won't. A lot of uh, pointless arguing. Um, there's a broken heart in the in the outcome, and um, he'll be left wondering if he's done enough. So no, it'll be him. The next one is going to be the newly reelected uh, Florida governor Ron DeSantis. Now, can he can he win the nomination? Ron DeSantis, can he win the nomination? We'll see. Ah, look at this. Card falls out. Says secrets being revealed. We're going to leave that right up there for now. So Ron DeSantis, can he win the nomination? Three cards. One, two, three. Okay. And the new moon, the moon card, secrets being revealed, fell out. Okay. Next one up is a five, six, seven, illusion and delusion. Okay, so he's got some element of that in his favor. Uh, then we've got um, the three of uh, coins, which is putting something together for public display. He's been building that persona of his um, for public display. I don't think it's necessarily who he is, but who he is is bad enough that they're willing to go along with this, this horrible, uh, uh, the worst instincts of the, uh, sadly, the majority of people in Florida. And then the last card as to whether he could, well, yeah, it's got the, the Hierophant, the government card. He could, he could pull it off, okay? And why is that? Even though we've got secrets being revealed here, we've got illusion and delusion. We've got building something very carefully for public display with value. And uh, and then it ends up with the final card as a Hierophant. Okay, very likely that he could uh, be a strong contender. Um, then we got New Jersey Governor Chris Christie in number four place. Could he... Could he win the nomination? Chris Christie. Okay, what do we got for him? Well, interesting. Let's take one more card then, just like that. Interesting. So we get the King of Pentacles. This is familial value. A couple of things come to mind here. It could be that in the end, he finds it's worth uh, dedicating himself to his family instead of to that campaign. The, but then when the Four of Cups is being offered something that you don't really want, that plays together exactly with that. And in the end, King of Pentacles, you know what? I think this is clearly, I mean, you could read this as saying that, that he could uh, win the nomination. But right away, starting off with familial value and being offered something you don't really want and then coming out as king of your value. Yeah, I think that's going to be what happens. He's going to stay close to home. Okay, so who's next? Uh, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. Oh, good grief. I gotta give it to him. He's got a nice new look. He's lost lots of weight. It must have been murder uh, trying to operate under that uh, Trump White House. But I don't see how anybody could. Well, there are plenty of people who would vote for him. So uh, can he? Could he be uh, the Republican nominee? Three cards. One, two, three. Mike Pompeo. Could he do it? Might he be the one? First card. Okay, this is the Seven of Wands, which is really fighting off lots of issues coming at you. So um, it'll, it would be a fight. 
Then we've got, uh, for Mike Pompeo, ah, having to make a choice at some point. Truth, justice, rules, law. And the final card with the king of wands, the king of plans. Getting something done. A strong contender, I would say. A strong contender. I don't get the feeling that he would win the nomination, though, but, but he could put up a decent uh, run, get through a couple of rounds. Uh, and then um, Nikki Haley, ambassador to the United Nations. Oh, my God. South Carolina. Uh, she has uh, Muslim parents. Not that it matters at all, but uh, it speaks to having a little bit of an ethnic upbringing uh, that might have uh, given her a different perspective on people. Although, you know, at first blush, she just comes off as, a, you know, just the woman next door. It might not have been the case when she was a kid, but Nikki Haley, can she do it? One, two, three. A little bit of soda. Ah, that's good. Nikki Haley. What about you, Nikki Haley? Seven of Swords. Uh, Seven of Swords is Theft and Betrayal. Wow, Theft and Betrayal for Nikki Haley. Leading off with that. Next one for that is the Page of Swords. She has just a little bit of value as a truth teller. Okay. And, um, and then the final cards with the uh, number six of the Major Arcana. And uh, no, it's the six of wands, as a matter of fact. Yep. So, uh, wands are actions, plans. You know, it, it's, 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 it's victory. But, you know, we start out with theft and betrayal. We have here just a small... You know what? She could come in as a number two along the way. Or she could make it through quite a few rounds. Yeah, she's got some victory in her. So, there we go. So, now let's do one quick one uh, just for the fun of it will a Republican or a Democrat win the 2024 election let's just say that will a Republican or a Democrat win the 2024 election three cards one two three let's see Republican or Democrat 2024 ah partnerships um, the nine up oh, having lots of value. Oh, and the end of a cycle. Uh, it could mean that yeah, we're a Republican uh, could uh, win. Interesting. So let's go on to Jack Smith. So I've got to find him on my list here. And a second, Jack Smith, special counsel. Oh, yeah. So this guy has got just all the experience that you'd want um, if you want uh, to get a guy uh, convicted. He's, he's the man who's going to get the job done for you. So Jack Smith, is, is he going to convict Trump? Let's just get right to the, to the point. Is he going to convict Trump? And let's do it in six cards. Jack Smith, will you be the one to eventually convict Donald Trump. One, two, three, four, five, six. Will Jack Smith, what a name, be the one to finally con convict Donald Trump? We have the signifier here of the Six of Cups. Very interesting. It's kind of uh, wishing things were the way they were, which is a spin on that MAGA thing because we're wanting to get, I think, sane people are wanting to get uh, politics back to where it used to be. Uh, the challenge to that is the chariot. Things move, the challenge is things moving fast. It doesn't mean that things will move fast. The challenge is getting things moving fast. The uh, basis of that with this King of Pentacles is um, really having found the, this is Trump, having found the the jackpot. In the base of this, this King of Swords, ah, and this is uh, Jack Smith himself, will have been the King of Truth, Justice, Rules, and Law. And in the sky of this thing, balancing those two of Pentacles, is he's going to find just the right balance, okay, to make this thing work. And the final outcome being the five of, oh, this is a good, because the five of coins is being left out in the cold. Could be 
that uh, he gets him to a point and then it doesn't go any further. That's what I see. Well, that was pretty tough. I hope you liked uh, the format. I'm trying some little different stuff here, maybe uh, talking a little bit more, and we'll see how that works out. Let me know. Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. Hang on. So this is the Crow Tarot by M.J. Cullinan. I suppose that's how that's pronounced. And uh, they come in a really nice, sturdy box. Um, if you got this as a gift, you feel like, you know, that was a nice gift. The uh, guidebook is pretty interesting. Uh, it has uh, good uh, suggestions on how to use these cards for divination. And then right in the back here, it talks about the artist and the author of Crow Tarot. And it just says that Margot Jones, so that is MJ in the MJ Cullinan, is a Seattle-based artist, writer, mother, and lover of all things magical, especially Crow. She attended Parsons School of Design, yet her unique te uh, technique of telling stories through digital collage is self-taught and has been her passion for over 10 years. And I don't know that's as of when. Um, nature and its creatures are a familiar theme in MJ's work. However, having grown up in the south of Boston, her collages are heavily influenced by the energy of the city. Her work often merges the two worlds. Her path into the world of tarot was a beautiful accident that came out of a difficult time in her life. The process of creating Crow Tarot helped her rediscover her own wings, though at the time she didn't realize how life-changing the project would become. She simply fell in love with the process, the messages, and the feeling uh, each card revoked. The Crow Tarot, MJ's first published deck, has achieved a significant following and recognition with Crow lovers and the tarot community. When MJ is not making art or writing for her Crow Tarot blog, Hmm. She's spending time with her daughter, River, playing in nature, practicing magic, and finding new sources of inspiration. So I love that, to don't know a little bit about the artist. And uh, like I say, the descriptions here are useful in the divination, especially when so much thought is going into the cards. The, the cards themselves are just really amazing, and I love using these cards a lot. They've got a sort of a, an antique uh, kind of patina to the cards. I mean, it's not really a patina because it's fake, but you can see how each card has a little wornness about it that kind of makes them uh, fun to use. And they're beautiful cards. And, you know, what, the reason I do this is for those folks who don't get to see uh, full decks of tarot cards very often. At least this way you get a little preview of some of these cards. And uh, it's a nice way to uh, shuffle up the cards without damaging them. I like to keep my cards in good shape as long as I can. And um, so that is... The Crow Tarot. I'm Mark, my journey through tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by, we'll do it again. Ciao for now. One, two, three. You really make a big difference. Thank you.